we are going to take a look at group one structures and specifically we're going to focus on the organs of the thoracic cavity. So if we start up here at the top under his chin area, we're first going to see the larynx. The larynx is this smooth structure um, right here just at the top of the trachea. So trachea is going to have those tracheal rings on it. It's pretty easy to identify at the very top toward the head, um, the, the cranial region of the trachea, we're going to see the larynx. So larynx here, trachea here. Now just at the bottom of the larynx and the upper region of the trachea, you're going to see the lobes of the thyroid gland. There are two lobes. Here would be a right lobe. If I kind of wiggle it a little bit, you can see. And then over here would be the left lobe. These constitute the thyroid gland. So this is the right lobe of the thyroid gland. This is the left lobe of the thyroid gland. If we look behind the trachea, we can see the esophagus. Now I'm gonna kind of grab the trachea here with my fingers and just roll it to the side, kind of clear away some of this connective tissue. And there is a dark, pretty flat tube that's running up and down directly behind the trachea. This is the esophagus. So trachea lays on top of the esophagus that's here. It's a collapsed tube. As we follow the trachea down, we're gonna encounter the lungs, the heart. Let me move my mink up a little bit so you can see a little better. We're gonna encounter the lungs, the heart, and then the diaphragm. So this structure right here, that's the diaphragm. I have cut it away from the abdominal cavity wall. So it's just this arched shaped muscle that sits on top of the liver that's there. Now from the diaphragm, we come back up and revisit the lungs. So here's a set of lungs on his right side. Here's a set of lungs on his left side. Now you need to be familiar with the names of each lobe, okay? So this first lobe, fairly large, the one closest to his head, the superior lobe, this is called the cranial lobe. As we move down, we have the medial lobe, and then kind of tucked away is the caudal lobe. So caudal means tail, this would be your most inferior. Cranial refers to the head, so that's your most superior. So cranial, medial, and caudal lobe of the lung. If we lift the heart up just a little bit, there is another lobe. This is the accessory lobe. I'm wiggling it right here. That's the accessory lobe. It's right beside that inferior vena cava. You can see the inferior vena cava running right here at the bottom of the heart. There's that accessory lobe. On his left side, there's only two lobes. So there is a cranial lobe right here, and then there's a caudal lobe down here at the bottom. So caudal, left caudal lobe, left cranial lobe. If we revisit the right side, right cranial lobe, right medial lobe, right caudal lobe. And then under the heart, we lift the heart up a little bit, just above the diaphragm, we've got the accessory lobe right here. Now surrounding the lungs is the pleura. Now, pleura is not something that we can physically, you know, pull out and hold. It's a membrane, and that membrane covers the lungs and lines the thoracic cavity. So you can see my lungs here are quite shiny. This shiny membrane on the surface of the lungs is called the visceral pleura. Visceral pleura, it covers each lobe. And then lining the wall of the cavity, I have cut away um, the ribs so that we can see a little better, but you can see the inside, the deep portion of the ribs there, that's shiny as well. That is lined by the parietal pleura. So this wall is lined by parietal pleura and the lungs themselves are covered in the visceral pleura. Now, if we move to the heart, the heart also has a membrane around it. I have cut it away, it's called the pericardium. I left a little bit over here to the side. I'm gonna kinda get the probe under it. See this part right here? That's actually part of the pericardium. I can stretch it back around the surface of the heart right here. So that sac around the heart is called the pericardium. What I have done is just kinda cut it down the center um, and peeled it on the edges. So I'm peeling it away so that you can see that pericardium and it exposes the chambers of the heart. Now, if we look at the heart itself, I'm kind of going to squish the heart down a little bit. 
and I believe I'm gonna try to zoom in on the video so that you can see a little bit better on that heart. I'm trying to zoom in for you guys. We come up this direction. Okay, so the heart is four chambered. You have two oracles and you have two atria. So I'm holding the heart down right now and we're able to pretty easily see that right oracle. The right oracle is the pouch that covers and surrounds the atrium. So inside this right oracle would be the right atrium. That's the chamber that houses the blood. We call this little pouch an oracle. So this is the right oracle right here. Now if I roll the heart to the left, you can see, kind of peel that long away. It's a little harder to see because it's more posterior, but right there, I'm kind of wiggling it a little bit. That is the left oracle. So left oracle is this pouch. And if I roll the heart back over, right oracle is this pouch. Pretty easy to see right from that superior vena cava. The ventricles are the lower chambers. So this would be the right ventricle, right below that right oracle. And where the apex of the heart is, the tip of the heart, that would be left ventricle. So all of this is left ventricle and all of this is right ventricle. Sometimes you can see a pretty good separation by the coronary artery. In this particular mink, you don't really see much of a coronary artery. There is a bit of a color change where the right ventricle is a bit darker than the left ventricle, but you can't really go by that because each heart's gonna look different. Um, but usually there is a little groove, a little sulcus running right through there, and that's where the coronary artery would be visible. It's just not showing up very well in my mink. So I've got right ventricle, left ventricle, right auricle. If I roll the heart over, left auricle right here. Now, a couple of the vessels we're gonna go ahead and identify. Coming off the top of the heart right here, draining blood actually into that right atria where the right auricle is, is our superior vena cava. That's pretty easy to pick out. A lot of times it'll be a nice blue color. If your mink did not stain, it may look more of a dark brown color. That's gonna be the superior vena cava. Underneath the heart, we actually saw this earlier, is the inferior vena cava. So I'm running that probe right across the top of it. That's the inferior vena cava. And both of these are veins, of course. They're carrying blood into the right side of the heart. And we can see two arteries. Now, this mink is not the great, the best specimen, and unfortunately, a lot of specimens are just not good examples. But um, I'm gonna do my best to point these out. Between your right auricle and your left auricle, between these two is the pulmonary uh, trunk. That's an artery, it's running right here. I'm running the probe right over the top of it. I know it may not translate very well to that video, but if you just look between the auricles, that pulmonary trunk runs right through, right there, okay? That's actually carrying blood away from that right ventricle. Now we can also see the aorta. If I push the heart down a little bit more, I'm gonna to try to use my hands to hold the lungs back as well. We can see the aorta. This is the aorta right here. It's usually quite large. It may feel kind of squishy if your mink has a lot of adipose tissue. There may be fat on top of that aorta that's there. It's really thick with connective tissue as well. It's um, the vessel that's under the most pressure because it's carrying blood away from that left ventricle. So this guy right here, I'm just running the probe right over it. That's the aorta. It sits just superior or just above that pulmonary trunk. So pulmonary trunk runs right through here, and then the aorta is on top of the heart right here. One way to pick out the aorta is to see if you can find two arteries coming off of it. Here's one, and then here's another right here. So I can see my two arteries, so I know that has to be the aorta that's right there.